Here we'll learn details of the oral cavity, the mouth, which is the first portion of the gastrointestinal tract. To begin, denote that the oral cavity anatomically divides into two regions, the oral vestibule, which is external to the teeth, and the oral cavity proper, which is enclosed by the teeth. Close your teeth and puff out your cheeks. The oral vestibule is the space between your cheeks and the teeth. The oral cavity proper is the space that your teeth encloses. Next, denote the boundaries of the mouth. Superiorly, the palate forms the roof of the mouth. Inferiorly, the right and left mylohyoid muscles form the floor of the mouth. They extend from the mandible, from mylo, to the hyoid bone. Anteriorly, the lips enclose and regulate the oral fissure, the opening. Laterally, the cheeks comprise soft tissues, including muscles that compress the walls of the mouth. Posteriorly, the oral cavity is open to the oral pharynx, which accepts the swallowed foods and liquids. Internally, the oral mucosa lines the mouth. Now let's draw the oral cavity in anterior view. First show that the upper, superior, and lower, inferior lips encircle the anterior opening of the mouth. Denote that the lips comprise muscles, including orbicularis oris, and superior and inferior labial muscles, and neurovascular structures. Next show the teeth. The upper teeth are housed in the maxilla, and the lower teeth are housed in the mandible. Show the gingiva, the gums, which cover the bones of the jaws, and an overlying mucosal membrane. Indicate the superior labial frenulum and inferior labial frenulum, which attach the gingiva to the lips. Push your tongue between your front teeth and your lips to feel the frenula, which are folds of mucous membrane. Next, draw the tongue so that the tip is turned slightly upward toward the palate. Show that the lingual frenulum, which is another mucosal fold, attaches the inferior surface of the tongue to the floor of the oral cavity. Recall that lingual refers to the tongue. Draw the salivary duct orifices, which release saliva into the floor of the mouth via orifices under the anterior tongue. Later, we'll learn the glands that produce the saliva. Next, indicate the hard and soft palates of the roof of the mouth. Denote that the hard palate, which forms the anterior two-thirds of the palate, comprises the maxillary and palatine bones. In our diagram, show the palatine raphe, which is a raised midline ridge that signifies where the right and left sides of the palate fused during fetal development. You can feel this ridge along the roof of your mouth with your tongue. Then show the transverse palatine folds, also known as palatine rugae, which are ridges of connective tissue that provide friction to facilitate bullous formation. Denote that the soft palate comprises the palatine aponeurosis, which attaches anteriorly to the hard palate, and four sets of paired muscles. During swallowing, the soft palate raises to block foods and liquids from the posterior opening to the nasal cavity. In our diagram, label the soft palate and the uvula, which extends from the free edge of the soft palate at the midline. The uvula comprises the musculus uvulae and connective tissues. Indicate the two posterior arches, the palatoglossal arch, which extends from the soft palate to the tongue, and posterior to it, the palatopharyngeal arch, which attaches to the pharynx. These arches are formed by the bilateral palatopharyngeus muscles, which elevate the pharynx during swallowing. Between the arches show the palatine tonsils, which are collections of lymphoid tissue housed within the tonsillar sinuses, or fossae. The palatine tonsils monitor and respond to ingested infectious materials. Indicate the fauces, which is the posterior opening of the oral cavity, it leads to the oral pharynx. Now let's draw the oral cavity in lateral view. First outline a head in lateral view. Label the lips and the ear. In a cutaway view, show the anterior and posterior portions of the mandible. It forms the inferior bony framework of the oral cavity. 
draw the upper gingiva and teeth and indicate the lower teeth arising from the mandible. Now let's address two muscles that contribute to the oral cavity. Draw a mylohyoid, which contributes to the floor of the mouth. It attaches to the hyoid bone posteriorly, which is not shown. Show that the buccinator arises in part from the mandible and extends towards the lips as a flat sheet within the cheeks. We cut it away to show the inside of the oral cavity. Next, for context, show that the masseter arises from the zygomatic bone, which is also not shown, and inserts on the mandible. Its fibers run vertically. The masseter elevates the mandible and is involved in mastication, chewing. Show that the oral mucosal lining is continuous with the lips and lines the inner surfaces of the oral cavity. Show that the muscular tongue fills the oral cavity and is connected to the mucous membrane inferiorly via the lingual frenulum. Three sets of paired extrinsic salivary glands surround the oral cavity. Create a second small table. Show and write that the parotid gland is the largest and lies in the side of the face, anterior to the ear, and superficial to the masseter. We draw it as grainy to emphasize its glandular tissues. Show that the parotid gland drains saliva into the mouth via the parotid duct. The parotid duct is easily visible during dissection, given its relatively large diameter and long length as it passes superficially over the masseter. Show and write that the sublingual gland lies beneath the tongue in the floor of the mouth. Indicate that it secretes saliva across this lining via several small ducts. Sublingual refers to the gland's location below the tongue. Show and write that the submandibular gland, which is roughly the size of a walnut, lies along the medial side of the mandible and wraps around the mylohyoid muscle. Indicate that its duct also drains into the floor of the mouth. Finally, denote the key functions of the oral cavity. It initiates chemical and mechanical or physical digestion. The teeth and tongue physically manipulate the food. Salivary enzymes chemically digest carbohydrates. Then consider the clinical consequences of dry mouth or too little saliva in the mouth. Decreased lubrication can impair tasting, chewing, swallowing, and speaking. Decreased salivary bacteria-fighting enzymes increase the chances of dental decay and oral infections. This concludes our diagram.